Welcome back students. In this video, we're going to look at another addition reaction called hydroboration oxidation. In the general hydroboration oxidation reaction, you are again going to be adding OH and H across the pi bond. What you're going to find is that the first step is BH3 with this little dot right here and then THF. This is a complex between BH3 which is called borane, and THF, which is a solvent. The reason that we do this is because if we didn't, BH3 is so reactive that it actually reacts with itself to create B2H6, which is called diborane. So you'll see this BH3.THF, and this is your first part of the reaction. Then in a second step, you're going to use hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide as your reducing agents. You might also see some people put water in there, but I personally don't add water to my list because H2O2 is aqueous, so I don't need to also write water. What we're going to find in this reaction is you make an alcohol again. We're adding H and OH across the pi bond. The difference is going to be that the OH goes to the less substituted side. So let's look at more of that regiochemistry, and then we'll consider the stereochemistry. First, I want to look at the mechanism because the mechanism explains the regiochemistry. If your alkene is asymmetrical, your OH is going to add to the less substituted side. The less substituted side is called the anti Makarvnikov addition or the anti Makarvnikov product because Makarvnikov products were ones where your nucleophile added to the more substituted side. So, anti is the opposite of that. Let's look at the mechanism. Your pi bond is going to attack the boron, and then a pair of electrons plus the hydrogen is going to attack the other side of the pi bond. I'm going to draw what's called the transition state. And in the transition state, we're drawing all the bonds that are breaking and forming as dashed bonds. One of the bonds that's breaking is the pi bond itself. And then we're forming a bond to the hydrogen. That hydrogen is already bound to the boron, and actually that bond is breaking as well. And then this carbon is forming a bond to the boron, and the boron still has two hydrogens attached to it. So this thing we're going to put in brackets, and then we're going to put this uh, straight line with two lines uh, perpendicular to that. It's called a double dagger, and that is the symbol for, hey, this is a transition state. So next, let's draw how the BH2 has attached itself to the less substituted side. And remember, you added a hydrogen here. So this is your first step of adding the BH3THF. And then you go through that oxidation step, where in your oxidation step, your sodium hydroxide and your hydrogen peroxide replace the BH2 with an OH. Let's look a little bit more at the regiochemistry and why the BH2 is adding to the less substituted side. Here I've redrawn the transition state. So here's a transition state. Again, transition states are brackets with a double dagger, brackets with a double dagger, and we're showing all the bonds that are breaking and forming as dashed bonds. If we focus in on the BH2 and where it's located with respect to where that pi bond is, notice how the BH2 is here and where the pi bond is breaking, there's a less substituted and a more substituted side. Here's my more substituted side where I've got these big methyl groups over here. Notice on the left how my BH2 is not overlapping with my methyls. But now on the right, I've got my BH2, and then I have a methyl, and I've got a methyl. What is happening here is your BH2 is too close to those methyl groups, and that makes a crowded transition state. So when you have a too crowded transition state, that means we're increasing steric hindrance, which means we're increasing energy, which means we're increasing the difference in energy between the transition state and the starting materials. And what does that mean? An increase of energy of activation. So your hill to make this happen is too high. And that's why your BH2 adds to the less substituted side. 
So this is not going to form, and instead you are going to have your BH2 add to the less substituted side because it leads to a less hindered and thus more stable transition state. Now let's look at stereochemistry. Your alkene that you started with was trigonal planar, right? So it was sp2 hybridized and all those atoms were in the same plane. Your BH3, trigonal planar, right? So all those atoms are in the same plane. What's happening is if your alkene is one of my hands and your BH2 is my other hand, they're interacting like this on the same plane. What that results in is something called syn addition. Syn addition means that your hydrogen and your BH2 are adding to the same face across that pi bond. The easiest way to illustrate this, and I'm going to separate these ideas here, is with a ring, because with a ring it's easiest to see. If we have a ring, your BH2, which is eventually going to be replaced by an OH, is going to add to the less substituted side, and if it's wedge, then that means that the H that's adding is also wedge. Now notice how I had a methyl already on that position. The fact that the H and the OH are adding from the same side is going to force that methyl to then become dash. Because we have a set of chiral centers here, we should anticipate some enantiomers. Your H and your OH can add from one side, then create the wedge H and OH. But we could also have the H and the OH add from the back side, which would create a dashed OH and a dashed H. If that H is dashed, that's going to force the methyl on that carbon to become wedge. So now we're expecting a pair of enantiomers. Both of these products will form in a 50-50 mixture. Remember that that 50-50 mixture is called a racemic mixture when you have a 50-50 mixture of enantiomers. So for your stereochemistry, you're expecting syn addition, but the syn addition really only plays out when you're forming chirality centers at the end. If you didn't have a chiral center form, then, you know, you can't really show syn addition very well. Let's wrap up. In this video, we looked at hydroboration oxidation. We said that we are adding an H and an OH across the pi bond, but this time it's anti Makarovnikov. There is no carbocation in this reaction, which means there's no possibility for carbocation rearrangements. Your OH is just going to add to the less substituted side, and that's it. You do want to watch out for the fact that this is a syn addition, meaning that the H and the OH are adding from the same face. So you need to keep be on the lookout for potential enantiomers. Thanks so much for watching. This is Katoni signing out.